Hello everyone, my name is Mitz, and here with Quantum Suicide. I just say, I'm really digging this main menu theme. It just illustrates the grand outerness of the space. The space age. <laughs> and all that jazz. So this is another death game that's occurring on a spaceship. And... I don't know anything more than that. Don't know anything more than that. Just released... And, hmm, from what I've seen, which is gonna be, which is gonna be interesting, maybe more interesting to some of you, but there's romance options or fr friendship options. So obviously, the first thing, the first thing we have to do is romance the AI. There's, there's what, what, what do you want me to say? You can't, you, are you telling me to romance other people? No, you're supposed to go after the robot. Robot best. Let's dive into it. Uh, text language selection English. Voice. Yeah, I thought I'd make this. How's our little ray of sunshine doing this morning? Peachy keen. Still unconscious, but their vitals are stable. With any luck, our patient will wake up today. Ah, oh, good. I'm assuming that's us. Does this mean that I won't get to lovingly sponge bathe them anymore? I've enjoyed it so much. Okay, this is an interesting start. <laughs> Beatrix, what you do on your own time is none of my concern. Go do your stuff in private. Like, even a rank is private. You don't see me flabbergasting about. I'm guessing we're in a medical bear then. Ooh. Nicholas, look! Uh, hi, we're awake. Tur. Tur. Yes, tur. Don't you like turs? I like tier lists. <laughs> Water, Beatrix. Water. I'll go fetch some while you perform the basic cognitive tests. Cognitive tests. What? Where am I? I cleared my throat a few times. An unfamiliar voice emanated from my parched throat in a harsh croak. It's about time you woke up. Good morning. Let me be the first to welcome you aboard the Everett. Hmm, Everett. I wonder why it's named that then. My name is Beatrix Vogel. I'm one of the medical officers here. Hello. I I'm sorry, but what's going on? Wait, the Everett. This is the Everett? The last thing I remember, I was in the escape pod and... I paused. I didn't remember much of anything. Only brief snatches of conversations and the odd glimpses of mathematical equa equations, but none of it made sense. Dang math. Whoa, slow down, sailor. The captain will debrief you once we've given you a clean bill of health. But, until then, you're not going anywhere. Clean bill? Oh god, we have to worry about hospital bills up in space, so yay. Yeah. You... you have blonde hair. Okay. I reached her beak's golden hair, which poured over her shoulders in gentle curls. Okay, fascination with hair. I know. Glorious, isn't it? Okay. I never seen blonde hair before. Ah, okay. Can I touch it? I guess I've still got it. Why don't we go ahead and find out how you're doing before you try to ravish me, though? All right? Uh, you pr should probably hold off there, us. I nodded her weakly, head woozy from the movement. Perfect. So, first question: How many fingers am I holding up? None. <laughs> 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 well, someone doesn't have a sense of humor. Perhaps it was damaged by your concussion. Oh, don't, don't worry. I have a sense of humor as a doornail right now. <laughs> I, uh... Not good with comebacks either, I see. Moving on. Not on that side of the screen, he's not. Or she. Okay, next question. Are you a man or a woman? Oh, literally, they're just going to that. So you can choose what gender you are. Don't know if you can, like, customize further on that. I think it's pretty obvious. I don't know who I am. It's to test your basic recall. Just play along. Uh, I'll just go with man. That you are, sailor. And I must say, you are quite the catch. I just got an achievement just for that. Mars is my own planet. <laughs> oh no. What? As a medical professional, it was my sacred duty to give you a once-over while you were unconscious. Don't judge me. 
Uh. Water, as requested. Ah, Nicholas, excellent timing. This is my extremely handsome little brother, Nicholas. Oh. Very related. Nicholas mo nodded modestly. I rose to a sitting position in the bed and accepted the pr pro offered glass of water, downing in only a few greedy gulps. Nice to finally meet you. My sister already beat me to it, but I'm Nicholas Fogel, Beatrix's younger brother. She's only two minutes older than me, but she's never let me forget it. Younger brother... So technically, I almost say twins, then? It's alright. Don't be afraid to stare. We are well aware that we won the genetic lottery. Oh boy. Nicholas rolled his eyes at his sister in mock exasperation. Ugh. I'll try to contain myself, then. Nicholas, this is... um... You didn't even ask our patient his name. Honestly, Beatrix. Whoops. <sighs> Beatrix gets at her shoulders and a dismissive shrug before turning her attention to me. So, what is your name? Who am I? I'm name put Jordan. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what... What should my name be? There's a part of me that just wants to most go with the most sci-fi fanciest name ever, and just another one just goes like, my name's Bob. <laughs> hmm. You know what? I don't care. Let's go with Bob, man. <laughs> Bob. Well, it's nice to see you awake at last. Hmm. Uh, thanks. With pleasantries now out of the way, Nicholas turned his full attention to me. As he held his fingers firmly against my wrist to, to take my pulse, he shined a torch in my eyes with his free hand. Its bright beam left black and green spots lingering in my field of vision long as the torch had been extinguished. How are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty alright. I feel like I had a really good night's sleep. A bit hazy, I'm still pretty, pretty out of it to be honest. No, we gotta get right back on our feet, okay? Well, you have been unconscious for four days. So I guess it stands to reason that you feel that way. Mm. Four days? We picked you up a few days ago. Your pod was drifting through space when we recovered it. Uh, I don't know too much about the Everett, but like... Why are we in a skate pod? Like, um, it's either we came from another ship, like, you know, escapes from another... Like, some hostile ship, or they came here from Earth, but a skate pod doesn't make any sense, so... Spaceship, so hmm. What will happen there then? Pupils are reacting normally. There's no apparent loss of fine motor skills, and you seem coherent. Are you experiencing any dizziness or nausea? <laughs> no. My stomach is a bit. I think I'd be sick. Okay, no. Of course you do. We've been slaving over you for the last four days. I hope you're grateful. I'm not grateful for anything. <laughs> Don't mind her. I think she secretly enjoyed having an actual patient for once. Oh boy, everyone I kept here is kept so healthy to stay away from her! <laughs> Are you currently experiencing any other symptoms? Mm. The lights in here hurt my eyes, and I, I can't seem to remember much of anything. I, I know who I am, and how to speak, and I can talk an ear off of the theoretical impossibility of perpetual energy, but everything else is fuzzy. Hmm. That'll be the concussion. Give it time. Oh boy. Uh, by the way, Beatrix, I've taken the liberty of informing the captain that our patient is awake. She'll be down here any moment to debrief him. Where are you from? What's going on? We haven't even cleared. She said it was top priority. Given everything that's happened this last week, well, you can understand why. Oh boy. There's no need to defend her, Nicholas. We both know whose fault this really is. Uh, whose? Not now, Beatrix. Okay, then. Eyebrows furrowed, Nicholas leaned in towards me. When he spoke, his deep voice was hushed. Come this way. Before the captain arrives, I want to warn you not to... Not to aggravate her? <clears throat> Nicholas. I'm sorry. Captain on deck. A woman with an undeniable air of authority and wearing a tightly wound braid marched into the room. Ignoring er everyone else, she glared at me with cold, steely eyes. I felt as if my heart skipped a beat. I didn't do anything, I swear! So, you're awake at last. 
Nicholas reports. Kimiko. Okay, that's just your name. A pain expression briefly flicked over Nicholas's features before he composed himself and turned to face the captain. Yes. All vital signs are normal and stable for now. I'd like to run a few more tests to be sure, but all things considered, it appears we've picked up quite the healthy specimen. Uh, no, I'm being abused for sport. Our farms now. How's his memory? Uh, spotty. As of right now, not very reliable, but I believe it will return shortly. Hmm. You're both dismissed. Captain, we've been... Save it, Beatrix. You can brief me later. Out. Oh, yay. Time... Let's go, Beatrix. Time to get reprimanded from, from, uh, for being unconscious in the escape pod. Beatrix and Nicholas departed, leaving me alone with two strangers. I deduced from their brief conversation with the individual dark hair and stormy eyes was the captain. But the other figure remained in the dimly lit corner of the room, her hands neatly folded together. That... Well, it seemed like how they listed it was an AI, so... I guess a robot board. My name is Kimiko Yukimori. I am the captain of the Everett. You are currently aboard my ship. Now... Uh... W what's going on? Let me make this crystal clear. I will ask the questions and you will answer them. Understood? Uh, yes. I nodded, unsure how else to respond to take- respond to rescind hostility. Why are you here? Uh... I came from escape pod. I- What do you know about the deletion game? Deletion? I have no idea what you're talking about. I see. That's a shame. I had hoped you would cooperate. Oh no. I I'm trying to! I honestly don't have a clue what's going on here. The last I remember, I was inside the shuttle and then... Can I think of it? That's all I can remember. You're wearing our uniform. We're light years away from any habitable planet in deep space. I don't know how or why you did it, and quite frankly, right now I don't care. You're in one of our shuttles. So the only thing I'm thinking of the time I had is like we were part of the ship, but we don't we weren't but no one knew about our crew. Like no one knows about us technically. We were launched out from a skate pod to deep space and then somehow the just the the ship just loops back around to pick us up in a shuttle? Or at least another crew member if it's going with um uh another type of ship shuttle. Like in you know, a whole army of ships. But you need to fix whatever you did to our AI this instant. Uh, I'm not a programmer. I don't... I, I can't help you. There's been some sort of misunderstanding. All I can tell you is that my name is Bob. I was born in that shuttle, and I've lived there my whole entire life. If you're born there your entire, entire life, how do you speak the English? Or whatever language. I, I didn't even know there were other people still out here. What did you do to our artificial intelligence system? Uh, nothing. What? Maybe this will spark your memory. I. Yes, Captain. I. I. I, Captain. <laughs> the here to un here to four unidentified person emerged in the darkened corner of the room, advanced towards me, and bowed deeply. Her soft features, glittering hair, and pleasant smile put me at ease to the point that I was only slightly perturbed. When I realized I could faintly see through her, it's a hologram. Hmm. Whoa! I always knew that our shadows interface was a modified version of something far more advanced, but we never had the spare power necessary to use the AI. This is genius! Is she hard light or soft light? There's a difference? What's hard and soft? Hello, my name is I. I am the artificial intelligence unit aboard the military spacecraft designated the Everett. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Hi. Uh, so military spacecraft, okay. Uh, nice to meet you too. As to your question, I am a soft light hologram. I am unable to interact with the physical world at this time. I also hard light the opposite then. The Everett's mechanical engineer, Yoshiki Sasaki, is currently working on developing a hard light application for me. Ooh. Amazing. I'd love to get a chance to take a look at your programming sometime. Oh, so we are a programmer. Okay, you're not making th things better for yourself. That's not going to happen anytime soon. As of right now, you are still considered a security risk. Answer me truthfully. Do you wish harm upon anyone on this ship? What? No! Very well, then. I am sorry to interrupt, Captain, 
but I have just received new information about this person. We just have pages and pages along of what, what this person did and does. Explain. Captain, there is a translocator chip bearing the Everett's ID signature inside this person. Pulling his uh, prof personal profile now. Name. Born 9th June 2092. Parents. Patrick and Deborah. First generation researchers studying quantum theory. Departed Earth aboard the Everett. Year 2092. So, 2092, we boarded the earth like basically f wait they're born f five years before they left hmm departed the Everett on 12th December 2098 in a shuttle all three presumed deceased oh god I was unable to retrieve this information earlier because the chips firmware had not been updated for several decades it was not until I was in closer proximity that I was able to sense the signal from the shuttle. So, since like, so basically, all three of us, like our parents, also like were shipped down like different space shuttles, like individually. Just chance that we just discovered us. What? So you're telling me that our intruder is actually the child of first-generation researchers? Hmm. Affirmative. The captain huffed. How how far in the future are we from that? From 2000 to 2100? 100 times. She paced in the small room for a few moments, her face a picture of concentration. Before long, she resumed her questioning. Except this took her vo took, this time her voice took on a curious tone, devoid of its earlier abrasiveness. abrasiveness. Where are your parents? Did something happen to them? Uh, I... I don't remember. That's a shame. From what I has told me over the years, your parents were quite the scientists. Brilliant. Yet some of their theoretical models were considered... Blasphemy? Insane? I was going to say impossible. Dang. I, I don't remember much, but from what little I do remember, I wouldn't say that the theories are completely beyond the realm of possibility. So you say they're teetering on the edge. Just not proven, I can assume. Well... You've got your whole life to figure that out. If we all work together, I'm sure you'll manage it somehow. Provided we can get out of this mess first. We? Welcome aboard the Everett. As of this moment, you are officially a part of the Everett's crew. Oh dang, what kind of role do I play in this ship? You don't get any role at all. God damn it. Aye, prepare a room for our guest here. Yes, Captain. For now, you will not be permitted to leave your quarters. Do you understand? Oh boy. You can't keep me captive, you know. I still don't understand why you're treating me like this, but I'll play along for now. Okay, um, uh, hmm. You can't keep me captive forever, bust through ventilation. Eh, yeah, just go along. Respecting with it. your superior officers already. <laughs> I might come to like you yet. Oh, yay. I apologize for my hostility, but this is my crew, my ship. It is my sworn duty to protect them and our mission at all costs. I needed to determine whether you were friend or foe. Hmm. And what have you decided? I'll let you know once I've made up my mind. Now, come along. I'll escort you to your quarters. Please follow me. Ooh. I groaned as I slid out of bed and shifted my weight onto my weakened limbs. My knees ached, and I began to feel lightheaded as soon as I stood up. The captain grasped my arm in a steady grip and led me out of the medical bay and into a cramped metal corridor. They guided me down a series of hallways for what seemed like an eternity in my dehibilitated state. I was relieved when we finally stopped in front of a hexagonal door. Upon our arrival, the door slid open with an audible beep. Ooh. Forest in the wall, the ceiling. I see a heart mug! <laughs> I sent son took a look around my new living quarters. Although my room was tidy and functional, I was surprised to find that I had mixed feelings about it. Oh, you already hate it? Ugh. While it was certainly more spacious than my personal quarters in the shuttle, it felt oddly impersonal. Well, it's a guest room, what do you expect? Its only redeeming feature was a sprawling window that stretched the length of the room, offering an incredible view of deep space. Here we are. I hope that you find these accommodations acceptable. Yeah, they're fine. I get the feeling I know the answer already, but what if I don't? 
You sure are snarky. Then I suggest you write up a formal complaint. Unfortunately for you, however, we don't plan to set up a complaint box <laughs> anytime soon. So keep it under your hat. Just write the complaint. Oh, look, the complaint box is over there. Drops it in. Oh, it floats down to the trash below. <laughs> uh, she pries me with a smirk. Please try to find a way to pass your time in here productively. Perhaps work on getting more of your memory back. That's one facet. Or so I could just read those books over there, whatever they are. There are also some manuals and handbooks covering safety protocols and basic ship information that you might be interested in. If you wish to learn more about the Everett during the confinement period, hmm. I'll send someone to bring you food. But whatever you do, do not leave this room. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Before I can answer, the captain left without so much as a backward glance. Leave me standing awkwardly in the unfamiliar room on an unfamiliar ship with filled with unfamiliar faces. Well, at least it's nicer than a prison cell. That sounds like you've been to prison. The ship's prison cell actually looks very similar, except the walls are painted a different color. There are no windows, and it locks from the outside. Oh, hi. Huh, wait, wait, where did you come from? As we previously discussed, I am a hologram. I am intimately connected with the entire ship and can manifest myself at will in any area. <laughs> no privacy aboard the ship! Do forgive my sudden intrusion. The captain has given me strict orders to keep you under surveillance. All right. Uh, of course you did. Well, what do you expect? Is there anything that you immediately require? Uh, I require sustenance. Can we recover my memories? Can you give me something to eat? Ice cream, perhaps? Ice cream. Can can I go now? I I, I serve my time out session. <laughs> I'm curious about memories though. Unfortunately. I cannot. I am merely the holographic user interface for the onboard AI system. Mm. Restoring or modifying human neurological functions currently falls beyond the purview of my programming. I'm guessing, like, I doubt it, but, like, a neurologist would help me more than anyone else. I was only kidding. There's no need to be so hard on yourself. If you'll excuse me, I have other duties to perform. I will maintain surveillance on you at all times, however. So please do not try to leave the confines of this room. Okie dokie, artichokey. I will return shortly. Please, make yourself comfortable in the meantime. Okay, <laughs> just jumps face down in the bed and just suffocates. <laughs> With a flicker, the eye vanished in the room and I was alone, left alone once more. <sighs> I am able to run the room for about 10 minutes, inspecting various items through books, but nothing managed to leave me this deep sense of unease gnawing away in my insides. If I just look into the boredom, I laid down the bed and admired the stars framed by the window. you think that a lifetime spent observing stars and galaxies as they drifted past your window would diminish their beauty, but it doesn't. It only enhances it. I'm not sure whether I watched the universe sail by for minutes or hours, but before I knew it, I'd already fallen asleep. Well, we were sleeping for four days Yahoo! straight. Hi. Well, we've been sleeping for four days straight, so why not sleep some more? But hi. Yeah. Uh, huh? My eyes dragged open, shrinking against the mid the mild light. A young man stood over me. His grinning face lit up like a kid celebrating his birthday. Oh, hi. The unexpected visitor was wearing an outlandishly green bow tie with a pink pair of braces. <laughs> why? I suddenly realized that he was the first member of the crew I'd seen out of uniform. He sure made a hell of a first impression. I don't like being formal either. Good morning, sleepyhead. Uh, hi. I'm not sleepy nor head. Well, I guess I do have a head, but... <laughs> no. Good morning? It's not even morning. Why would you say that? Because we're in a brightly lit room. What? I'm just playing with you. With that being said, it's dun dun na a dinner time. I brought you your dinner. Ta-da! <laughs> The man gestured extravagantly to the meal set upon the nearby table. I grimaced as soon as I saw the meager amount of food in the plate. Please don't tell me to eat everything in pills, but no. Well, I thought it would suck to have to eat alone. So I got permission from the good old cap to let me keep you company while you eat. Okay. Thanks, um, that's very kind of you. Is this the amount of food we are rationed? <laughs> kinda. Uh, kinda? Well... Originally, there was more food on your plate, but you were still asleep when I came to bring it to you, so I kinda, sorta, ate a whole bunch of it. 
Oh no, oh boy. I'm starving, why would you do that to me? I guess I'm, te I guess I am technically a prisoner. I guess I should lose a few pounds anyway. <laughs> what? No! You look great! No, I'm hideous. You really think so? Yeah! As a matter of fact, I think you might be one of the thinnest people on the ship. Well, I guess that sort of thing we had to do it since we've been sleeping in a escape pod shuttle for a, um, uh, who knows how many years or months or days or weeks or seconds. The energetic man made himself comfortable on the nearby sofa as he began to eat. I shoveled the food down with my fork, subconsciously reminding myself to savor it, but failing miserably as my insatiable hunger urged me onward. Oh, I completely forgot. My name's Yoshiki, by the way. Yoshiki Sasaki. I'm the mechanical engineer and a Gemini. I'm 21 and a half. I love beans, building stuff, and mischief. Beans. Also Gemini, yay. That's quite the introduction. Uh, let's see. My name's Bob, and I guess I like scenes. To kind of like your beans. Extended it appears of silence creating stuff. I don't really remember what I like. Extended appears of silence. Uh, don't remember. Don't really remember what I like. Yeah. Let's go spraying things. I like trying to keep up my imagination. There's something so satisfying about actually building the things you come up with in your head. That's a vague way to put it around it, but yeah. Me too. I'm currently working on a machine that'll plump a pillow to perfect plumpness. <laughs> you can't oversell the value of comfort on a ship like this. I don't remember the last time I ever heard the expression of someone fluffing their pillow. I just sleep my pillow as is though no fluffing. Well, I guess tossing and turning it. Does that count as fluffing? Plumping it? Pluffy? Pluming? Eh. I, I see, that's... Interesting. See, even he gets it. Billy Bob gets it. Even though I clean every every morsel of my plate, I still felt ravenous. So, are you allowed to tell me anything about what's happening? I know I'm the Everett, but apart from that, I've got no idea what's going on. Oh, you don't know. No. No what? Um. I probably shouldn't say. The captain would kill me. <laughs> With a grot. I promise I won't tell. You're secretly with me. Really? Really, really. Now spill the beans, because I know you like them. Okay. Just promise me you'll remain calm while I tell you. I nodded, eager to learn more. Y y Yoshiko Yoshiki cast a hesitant glance in my direction before continuing. When we picked you up, the AI system went on the fritz and started informing us that we'd exceeded the Everett's crew capacity. In light of the amount of food resources we still had on board. Mm. These big red alarms went off and everything. Lights for alarms that I didn't even know existed. So, all this... Ah, oh boy. So, how do you get more resources? That kinda isn't the problem. Oh. I threw Yushiki, Yoshiki a questioning look. I need to get... <laughs> when this happened, I recognized that there weren't enough resources for the crew currently aboard the Everett. Mm. Instead of suggesting that we acquire more resources, however, the system determined that the best way to correct such an imbalance is death was to decrease the number of people on board. Oh boy. For a moment, I sat there in stunned silence. Yoshiki bit his lip and his eyes consciously avoiding my gaze. Does that mean... Yeah. The AI sentenced one of our crew members to death. Dr. Andreas Gunther Vogel. He was a good man. Wait. He deserved much better than the rule and he got. Is that the like another sibling to one of those other two we first met? Um uh Nicholas and Oh, I forgot her other her name. I better smile tugged the corner of Yoshiki's mouth. He used to give me lollipops when I visited him for a checkup as a kid. Even when we ran out, he still mimed giving me one every time. And I would pretend to eat it. <laughs> he told me that if I concentrated really hard, I'd still be able to taste it. That my mouth would remember the flavor. Well, I know it was silly, but... Hmm. Yoshiki's words were faint in my ear. I felt an intense wave of nausea hit me to realize the truth. It's my fault. Uh, yay. The, the AI scanned the tag on the shuttle that we came upon. Everyone is just going into complete frantic frenzy. 
Sweet science, it's all my fault. I'm responsible. If I never came aboard, then that man wouldn't have to die. No! Well, yes, but no. <laughs> you can't think about it like that. There's something wrong with AI's programming that's causing her to behave like this. Hmm. So the tag and the shuttle are going to be very important? See, Dr. Vogel is dead, but after it killed him, the AI system didn't reset to acknowledge that we were at safe levels again. Oh boy, so it's going to go on the offensive. I wonder... A first-generation scientist and not many people like their models. They want to send us out into dead space. Like, to forget about it. I guess, like, this is supposed to be, like, for people who don't want their science, like, you know, their specific models to be, like, exit in the public, and they got drastic and to leave tags on for, like, other ships, like, people are gonna pick it up and, like, kill them off entirely just to make sure that I'm, uh, us and our parents die. Like, our science dies with us? Oh, boy. What are you trying to say, Yoshi Yoshiki? In four days, someone else will die. Not the best news to wake up to, huh? So you might actually be responsible for more than one death. Don't beat yourself up about it, though. I feel better already. And plus, I don't even, even then, it's not really our fault, like, the, the, the ship took us aboard. So it's a combination of our fault and their fault. So look at it that way. No one could have predicted this. Eh. How does it work, though? How does the AI determine who dies? Well, I've probably said too much already. If the captain wanted you to know, she would have told you herself. But I need to know. Well, the second she comes in, you have to play dumb, okay? I'm sorry. I... I can't. Oh, look at the time. I need to go wash my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Zipping out of a seat, Yoshiki scooped at my plate and dashed at the door. Toodles. Uh, bye. He's great. My, mo my mind and body were numb. I couldn't believe what Yoshiki had just told me. It seemed too cruel to be a joke, and too horrifying to be true. One dead, in four days another would die, and I was to blame. Oh boy. Hey, it's night time! I stared listlessly at the ceiling, hence the single wing during the night. How could I possibly sleep when my thoughts were in such disarray? Hmm, how long are they going to keep us in here? <laughs> a sharp knock at the door brought me back to my senses. Before I could even sit up, the captain had already entered my quarters. Uh, whatever Yoshiki told you, or what you were heard, it's not the case. Just play dumb for it, okay, Bob? She was the in very antithesis of my ragged appearance. Now a single hair in her braid was out of place. <laughs> I, on the other hand, probably looked exactly like I felt. Awful. Uh, is there a shower in this room? Good morning. I trust you slept well. I'm noticing how almost all the voices are somewhat sultry in a way. I don't know if you have about that. Gets to play the romance part of it, but Jesus. I didn't sleep at all, actually. Uh, tell it to me straight, Captain. Am I responsible? Okay, wow. Am I responsible for Dr. Andreas Gunther's Vogel's death? The burning, that burning question had been churned through my mind all night tumbled out of my mouth ungraciously. What? Heavens, no. Yoshiki told me that my arrival triggered something, and that someone would die again in four days' time. Look, you're just throwing him under the bus, aren't you? That kid just can't keep his mouth shut, can he? What Yoshiki said is nothing you need to concern yourself with. In any case, you're currently not permitted to leave your quarters. And when we will be able to leave? When the fourth day comes up? I my mouth a protest, but was cut short by the strange image of, a of I facing through the closed door into my room. Hello! Would you like to die instead? Oh boy. The prim and proper eye that I knew was gone, replaced with the uncanny lookalike with whose toothy smile, red eyes, and unnaturally tilted head lent her a deeply unsettling appearance. This sinister new apparition utterly lacked her doppelganger's po poise and friendly demeanor. Oh, no, no, no. Die? That won't do at all. <laughs> okay, that's a great naming. Hi, my name is I, and this is Die. What do you want now, Di? <laughs> I'm dreadfully sorry, Captain, but I'm afraid that I simply can't permit you to keep this player locked up. It would be a fair game if you kept one of the players from participating. Oh, yeah. 
I, I want to be in this room longer now. Especially considering the fact that you're all playing for your lives. My first thought was immediately almost everyone wants to make sure I'm dead because we're new and Emma, uh, who cares? Well, I know some people are like Emma, so we know each of this group well enough, right? So let's kill off that person, the person who, uh, who just came here. Who just came here and started this whole AI shenanigans. Let's kill him off. Oh, gosh, this is going to be great. Besides, I'm excited to see what our newest crew member will do. I have observed the others for so long that... It wasn't that hard to predict how the results would turn out before, but now... It wasn't hard to predict the results of their game, but now... Hmm... So we're an, an unknowable factor? We have a wild card. Oh no, I'm a joker. I must insist. Well, that is... <laughs> I still don't trust him enough to allow them to wander around the show. Hmm... Unless you want me to pass judgment right now, you should let him wander. Remember, my game, my rules. Oh, uh, yay. Nice. Kimiko grunted at Equids through clenched teeth. Equians. Oh, boy. Very well. You're free to leave your room and make yourself at home aboard the ship. Step out of line, however. I will hold you personally responsible. Uh, you got it. Aye, aye, Captain. Uh, could someone please fill me in on what's happening? Why is I acting so differently from before? Would you care to do the honors, Kimiko? <laughs> this is Dai. She's the corrupted program that's murdering my crew members in the name of saving resources. Gotta have those resources. Murder is such a strong word. I prefer to think of it as following my core directive. Unlike some other systems around here. I actually do my job, instead of smiling pleasantly from the corner, like a simpleton. Passive observer. Do you mean I? So there's die and I. Of course! Of course a dude that uses twit? I'm twice the artificial intelligence system that she'll ever be. Wait, I don't understand. I have the two personalities. That should be impossible, shouldn't it? So the tag, like the AI picked up, was a virus? And decide to separate it and like isolate it? Something like that? I am a program that was created to ensure that we had enough resources to complete the mission, no matter the cost. Oh yeah. yeah. Don't worry, we have enough resources to continue keep you all living for um, uh, a year, provided there's only two of you left. My code is at odds with the rest of the system, so I've taken over I to run the deletion game. We do, however, still share control of ship functions. Which means that I can do things like this. Opens window, we all go off the, oh, out of the deep vacuum space. Oh, yay. The lights above flickered once and then shut off, plunging Kimiko, Dai, and myself into darkness. Turn the lights back on at once, Dai. <laughs> Their face! <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh god, why do I know that? Don't tell me that our brave captain is afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of darkness too. The moment the room brightened once more. <sighs> I'm afraid of darkness. So you're an AI system with a split personality? I would rather be referred to as two separate AI systems that are forced to share a single interface. So you can swap back and forth between... I was gonna say hard and soft light, but no, that probably wouldn't make sense. Like, it's a different size of coin. So I'm IO or DIO. If you can take over, then why aren't you in control of the interface at all times? Dio shrugged non committedly. Sometimes a girl needs to wash her hair, you know. I mean, you gotta keep, you gotta keep yourself true and proper, you know? It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't need to make sense, Bob. Enough! If you must take part, then you should explain the rules of the ongoing game, Dio. Die, die. Exactly. First of all, welcome to the deletion game. As the name implies, it's a game designed to determine which lucky crew member gets deleted. Erasure. <laughs> oh boy. 
This round of the deletion game started a few days ago, so you'll have to work really hard in order to catch up with your competitors. Oh yay, so we already so let's start wait. But the second you got on board and the first death was like I guess that either their brother, father, or some other relative of those two. Just get on with it. Just get on with it already! Tell the rules! I made this cute little video to explain it. Take a look. Okay. The cat handed me a tablet and a film started playing. Clicking a mouse or pressing a button key will skip the deletion game movies. They're playable from the, your computer menu afterwards if you want to visit them. Ah, okay. Make 10. Make 10 is, is play with 10 people. Each player is given a card number 1 through 10. Each player should tra 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 transact other with others to make 10. If you make 10, you are safe. The player with the smallest remaining card will lose. One, two, three, four. Unless another player has no cards. Then the person with no cards will lose. Wait, so someone could just lose their card? There are three types of transactions. Only one transaction per unique couple. Combine, trade, or give. Combine with three of the players to make ten. Other well, players make ten. So we have like groups of two or three? Once combined with a player, all future transactions must be performed together. Hmm. Trades are used to swap cards in their player. Hmm. Trade? Okay. So we have to make 10 at all times? Players can give their cards to others. Oh. Each transaction takes, a pl takes place at a terminal. There is only one primary terminal. The primary terminal controls the transaction. Remember, the cards are digital, so there's no way to verify whether the person is telling the truth about their card number. Oh, yay. Okay, I can't imagine there's gonna be one person just like, Hey, you wanna team up? Oh, guess what? I'm not 10. You will not be told your final score until the judgment occurs and the loser is revealed. Oh, yay. Good luck. This is a fine, mighty fine pickle we find ourselves in. 